in a bull market when the VIX is, say, the, the volatility index is, say, around 10, 11, 12, the algos will suppress volatility because they buy and sell and keep the market really in a, in a narrow range. We saw that all of last year. But now that beast in the market, that serpent in the market that's driven by the machines, when you breach certain technical levels, and there's a number of high-profile stocks, especially the FANGs, that have violated traditional technical levels that are extremely important historically. Uh, when you have that, uh, the selling is compounded in the last, uh, since Thanksgiving, we had a 7% move up in the futures, uh, and then a 6% move down. That's a 14% swing in, in a week and a half. That is highly unnatural. Leslie, are people on Wall Street saying the same thing? Well, I think there's an important variable that we need to explain uh, that comes between the volatility and the quant funds, and that's liquidity. We're in a new regime as it, as it portends to liquidity. And so the machines have been there, but we didn't see the wild price swings because there was so much liquidity in the system. Now, that isn't the case as much. And so that's why you're seeing swings both to the upside, you're seeing swings to the downside. And if there's anything that these quant funds, that these algorithmic trading entities need it's uh they, they're characterized by leverage and uh expected price paths rules that they uh they code into their programs that can di dictate where the trading occurs and so you know in this environment where there's less liquidity you've got a rule change that they then you know if they are programmed to drive 40 miles per hour down the road and make a turn at 40 miles per hour suddenly they're required to make it at 70 miles per hour and they might fall off a cliff as a result <laughs> let's bring in gregory zuckerman special writer for the wall street journal he writes extensively on the quant funds uh Greg, good to see you again. Good seeing you. You know, you heard, I don't know whether you heard the quote from uh, uh, Lee Cooperman basically suggesting that the SEC has been derelict in its duty to, to uh, supervise the capital markets. Do you agree with that? Do these quant funds need more uh, regulation? Is this a genie that can be put back into the bottle, or does it need to be? Well, I'm always a big fan of uh, more regulation uh, to some extent, but I think we're just kind of looking for someone to blame. I mean, when the market was soaring hundreds of points a day, I don't remember Mr. Cooperman or other people kind of pointing the finger at, at these quants. Not that I'm here to uh, defend them necessarily, <laughs> but let's, let's keep it in perspective here. Uh, they, they buy and they also sell. Well, Larry, that's one thing that I think about as well, which is, you know, whether it's humans programming the machines or, or whatever the, the reasons behind it might be, shouldn't other investors who are looking at this then welcome the opportunity because these price distortions mean that they can get better value? Yes, well, uh, a couple of years ago, back in 2011, 12, we created our capitulation model to take advantage of this. And, and the reason is traditional capitulation in certain sectors, whether it be the oil names in recent weeks, these capitulation processes that used to take a week or two are now taking a day or hours. And so things get dramatically oversold. So we look for uh, breaches of those technical levels, of those key technical levels in our capitulation model. We look for that accelerated capitulation on those breaks and you want, and you want to take advantage of it, absolutely. Uh, we're, we're buyers here of the oil names, the XLE, the OIH, the XOP. And uh, you can get uh, fantastic trading and investment opportunities because, once again, as, as you've been pointing out, the machines oversell.